Hi, my name's Sarah, and you're not watching Disney Channel. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm gonna show you five really fun abstract acrylic painting techniques using yarn, ice cubes, a car honking outside, glue, and more. If you're interested in seeing more art-related videos on this channel, like drawing and painting, please give this video a thumbs up and or leave a comment below leaving your requests. And also, if you're not caught up on my most recent videos, I'll link those all below. I did this really cool Halloween-related one. I know Halloween's over, but it's really fun. And I may have licked my this journal. Okay, let's paint. Pew, pew, pew. For these projects, you don't need fancy paints. You can use any brand of affordable acrylics. For this first technique, I'm using a paper heart doily that I had left over from a Valentine's Day project a couple years ago on my channel. I already have some colors of paint squeezed out, as you can see, and I'm gonna use a sponge brush after the doily is laid down on the paper, and I'm gonna kinda use it as a stencil so the paint goes through, and then when you peel it away, or just lift it away, I mean, then you'll find the pattern is left on the paper. So this one's very affordable, quick, and easy to do. And as a plus, the doily is reusable. A variation of this would be to use a crochet yarn doily, and I was trying to do the same thing and use it as a stencil to get the paint through. Now with acrylics, this doesn't work too well because it's thick, so maybe if you watered down the acrylics to turn them into almost a watercolor or just use watercolor in general, then this would work a lot better. But I found a really cool way to turn the doily into a stamp, so all you're going to do is just paint your acrylics onto the yarn with a sponge brush or a paintbrush, and you can use multiple colors or just one, it doesn't matter. I chose to do a gradient from yellow to light blue and I painted half of the doily. Then once I had all the colors that I wanted, I put this down on a mini canvas panel and I'm going to press that firmly onto the board. It's actually not too messy as long as you don't glob the paint on, but if you wanna be extra careful, you can put a piece of paper on the back and press it down that way so you don't get any paint on your hands. And before the second press that I did on the other corner, I did apply more paint. You can leave the piece as is and make it really simplistic, or you can add more elements around and turn it into a kind of zentangly mandala piece. I know this is a painting video, but I decided to use Sharpies for this because it's a lot easier and quicker to get the detail this way. So I went in with different colors of Sharpies and put lines and dots and petals around. After placing all the marker lines of color down, I went back over that with a sponge brush and some yellow paint to match the rest of it and make it kind of flow together more because without it the white spots just stuck out like a sore thumb and there was just way too much contrast so I thought this brought it together more as a whole. Use your imagination to turn other things into stencils and stamps. For instance, a few months back I made a painting with slime video so you can also use slime as a stamp to get really unique pieces. For the second technique, I'm using a silicone ice cube tray and I filled a glue bottle, an empty clean one, with some water so it's gonna be easier to squirt water into the cube compartments. They're unicorns, they're so cute. Don't fill them all the way to the tip top with water. You wanna leave a little bit of room for the paint. So for this, I'm just adding a few squirts of the paint and here I'm showing that I mix it with the toothpick, but you really don't have to mix it because it's gonna to sink to the bottom anyway. And once you have as much paint in as you want, go ahead and leave the toothpick in the mold because this is going to act as kind of a paintbrush handle after it hardens. If you are gonna do this one, you'll wanna plan ahead or make sure that you have other projects planned if you're watching kids or if you're doing this as a group activity, just make sure that you have something already planned for the time that it's gonna take the ice to harden or that it's gonna take the water to turn into ice, wow. And something cool that you can do is add multiple colors of paint into one opening. So here I have purple and pink swirled together. I don't know the exact amount of time that it takes to freeze this, but I did do this in the afternoon and it was done before dinner. So I did leave it in there for probably four or five hours, but I think that it was hardened after a couple because I checked it in between and I was just doing other things. So I didn't go back to filming right away. The toothpick placement kind of makes it look like they have extremely long horns, doesn't it? But that's perfect because like I said, 
those are the paintbrush handles so you don't have to touch the ice and get all cold and gloppy. This makes it less messy for sure. So all you have to do is just glide the ice cube paint along the paper and it should leave magical trails along the page. So I basically turned this into a unicorn ice skating rink and it makes me think of those really cool Christmassy winter figurines at the store where I think they're battery powered and magnetic and they just kind of skate all around. If you guys know what I'm talking about, it's like a miniature scene. Those used to be my favorite things when I was a kid to go look at at the store and I don't know why I never ended up getting one, but I don't think I ever saw a unicorn one, so that should be a thing. The way the ice cube touches the paper and the amount of time you let it melt before dragging it will really affect the way that the paint looks, how bold it is, how opaque it is. So it can look like watercolors, but it could also look like acrylic if you just kind of put that face down on the paint and drag it that way. Also, you probably can't tell on camera, but the gold and silver paint that I used is so shimmery. It looks really cool in person when you move the paper around. You can actually see the little specks of glitter. And if you guys are wondering when this dries, it does dry just like normal acrylic paint. And you can use them for multiple paintings. Here I've let them melt for a few minutes on a second piece of paper, and I'm just dragging them to make it look a little bit satisfying but it already didn't work with the green one. It's almost like painting with popsicles, but there's no stickiness and I mean obviously you can't eat them, so you're not wasting anything. This third painting technique is pretty cool. I had never tried it before this video. So all you're gonna do for this is take a piece of yarn or string and you're going to paint it. But I realized right away that using the sponge brush to try to do this was a little bit difficult and it just kind of stuck to the sponge. So instead I just dipped that string into a paint palette here and that was a lot easier. Of course, the more paint you use, the more it's going to show up on the paper and the more it's going to spread. I find that the effect is a lot cooler if you mix colors together like I'm doing here. Now you want to take a piece of paper or a canvas panel like I have and you're going to just put the string on and dangle it so it makes loops or however you want it to be. Then put a piece of paper on top. Then you can either push down with your hand to apply pressure or put some flat items on top such as books like I'm using here. I actually discovered that it put a little bit too much weight and it made it really hard to pull the string out. So I just took a couple books off and then it was a lot easier to pull out. Now you can remove everything and reveal your image. This is what it looks like and you actually have a print of that so it's like a mirror image when you put them next to each other. So another thing you could do for this is fold a piece of paper in half with the string in the middle and then when you open it back up, it'll be like a mirror. I did decide to go back in with a couple more colors. So here you can see I did a yellow and an orange shape and for these I tried to pull the string more around if that makes sense so I didn't just pull it straight out I tried to move it while I was pulling and that's why it looks like there's more streaks on these moving on to the fourth one I've chosen five different colors and I'm gonna put little tiny dots of each onto my paper you want to make sure that the colors are fairly close together and aren't wider than the object that you're going to use to spread them or drag them on the page. Here you can see I'm using an old gift card, quote unquote, it's really like a game room card that I got from a bowling alley. The paint didn't ruin it, but I would recommend using an old gift card or a card that isn't in use anymore, like doesn't function. Or you can use a piece of cardboard or even a giant shower squeegee if you want to do a bigger area. So after that first initial spread, you can see that there's still paint left on my card and I'm using a blank piece of paper to just see what effects I can get by dragging this and I actually think it looks really really cool and the way that it turns out is very unpredictable and more of a surprise than the other. So going along with the same idea you can put these little splatters of paint and space them out more on the page and then just use the card to randomly spread it in multiple directions like I'm doing here. Just make sure that you don't use too many different colors or colors that blend to make ugly like poopy green or poopy brown colors. Here's what I was talking about earlier. The paints are a little bit wider than the gift card I'm using and I also didn't apply enough pressure on the one side so that orange got a little bit wonky. So I'm trying that same exact color scheme here to make it more satisfying for you all. 
the satisfaction of paint spreading. Seriously, I could just watch this for hours. So if you're enjoying this video so far and you don't want to miss the next one, please click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you never miss my upcoming videos. I post every single Friday and Sunday and I would love to have you join the SoCraftastic family. For the last piece, I'm using a canvas panel and some Elmer's school glue. Go ahead and spread the glue all over the canvas in a thin, even layer. Do this kind of quickly. You do have a few minutes before the glue dries, but you don't want to be too slow and have it dry before the painting is done. Once I coated the canvas with glue, I'm going in with different colors of acrylic paint and I'm just making circles. So I started in the middle with yellow. It looks kind of like mustard and then I'm putting orange around that. I think it works best if you don't have any gaps in your circle, but this is totally abstract and up to you. So any way you do it, it's probably gonna turn out really cool. Now you wanna grab something to spread the paint with, such as a toothpick, a bamboo skewer, a popsicle stick. Do some experimenting with items of different thicknesses to see which one you like best. You can see every time I drag from the yellow in the middle, I'm wiping off the end of that bamboo skewer on the paper towel because you also probably saw the time that I didn't wipe it off. I got pink in the middle, which is just something that I didn't want. So I did wipe it off with a paper towel and it was back to normal. So I just drug lines all the way around, making it resemble kind of like a spin art piece. And then I experimented with the popsicle stick here, as you can see, to get a wider line in the paint and i thought at that point it resembled a magic wand so i'm doing all these squiggly lines around to blend the paint more and make it look more like magic and like it's poofing and shooting magic vibes all around the canvas sometimes i just really suck at voiceovers okay only like every video sorry but personally i love it when youtubers don't have it all together it makes them more relatable in my opinion so here is my finished piece and i did let this dry overnight here is bam what it looks like or would it turn out like in the morning? If you guys are interested in even more painting with glue techniques, I have an entire video that I did on this. So all of these that you're seeing here were created using glue and acrylic paints. There's so many different things that you can do. Question of the video, as usual, is which project from this is your absolute favorite? Please leave a comment below. And if you guys wanna see another installment of cool acrylic painting techniques or even watercolor ones, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm gonna show you five, that was 10, five. If you're, inter if you're interested in hearing my nails, my nails make nice noises. Okay. And you're not watching Disney Channel. <laughs> my head's lying.